Well, sometimes it helps to compare what's happened in our country with other countries, say in the Western world, because it is very motivating, because it showers us with shame, because we've grown up being told our country's number one in every conceivable category. And now we know it's number 15 in wages, it's number one in incarceration and prisons per capita. It's the only country in the Western world that is so careless in not taking care of its children. So let me give you a very, very short glimpse of history. Many of you have read about Eugene Debs, arguably the greatest labor leader in our country's history. In the late 19th and 20th century, and at the end of his career, a reporter came up to him this is about 1920 or so. By the way, he ran for president five times, so I have a unique affinity with Eugene Debs. <laughs> they said, Mr. Debs, what is your greatest regret? And he said, in his deliberate way, my greatest regret? I'll tell you what my greatest regret is. My greatest regret is that under our Constitution, the American people can have almost anything they want but it just seems like they don't want much of anything at all. Fast forward, 1945, end of World War II. United States, the mightiest political, technological, and economic power in the world. There was no number two. Over in Western Europe, they were devastated. Rome, Berlin, Paris, Cologne, London, the countryside had disintegrated, disease, death, unexploded landmines everywhere. The economy to land stood land, at a standstill. Now watch what happened. People of Western Europe, through their trade unions, their social democratic parties, their cooperatives, their multi-party system, their instant runoff voting, their proportional representation, demanded and received the following by law for all their people. They demanded universal health care and got it. They demanded a living wage and got it. They demanded decent pensions and got it. They demanded four weeks paid vacation. It's now up to five in France and eight in Sweden, and they got it. They demanded university-free tuition, and they got it. They demanded laws that facilitated workers banding together for collective bargaining, and they got it. They demanded paid maternity leave. They demanded paid family sick leave, and they got it. They demanded decent daycare, and they got it. They demanded decent public transit, and they got it. And we do not have any of this 63 years later by law for all the American people in 2008. Shame on us. Sure. Sure, they paid higher taxes. Not that much higher. But look what they got for it as a community, as a humanitarian community. Look what they got for it. Well, Eugene Depp said something else. He said, better to vote for someone you believe in and lose than vote for someone you do not believe in and win because that someone will surely betray you. As, as did the Democratic Party when the anti-war movement, with few exceptions, took the year off in 2004 because they didn't want to embarrass John Kerry, who wanted more soldiers in Iraq. And as he said to Bush in the first debate, you remember, we wouldn't have pulled out of Fallujah. He was more hawkish than Bush. So they broke the back of the anti-war movement because they called off those rousing demonstrations in 2003, you'll recall, here and around the world. 
And what did the Democratic Party reward them with? They continued to fund the war along with the Republicans, and so did Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama until the last one, when it was embarrassing for them to do so. They continued to not to refuse to deauthorize the war. They refused to impeach Bush and Cheney, the most multiply impeachable president and vice president in American history. Oh. After all, criminal war of aggression in Iraq, impeachable offense number one, systematic torture, impeachable offense number two, spying on Americans in great numbers without judicial approval, impeachable attention number three, signing statements in the hundreds by Bush saying he'll sign this bill, but he'll decide whether or not to obey it. That's what we had a revolution for against King George III. We don't need King George IV. So where are we now? Here's, here's where we are. Here's where we are. Here's where we are now. It doesn't matter how proper and just our causes are if we do not put civic and political muscle behind it. The difference with this gathering is it's going to support, I hope, the Nader Gonzalez candidacy, which will go past 2008 and with a swell of support and commitment in congressional districts, move into 2009 and set up citizen congresses in each congressional district to take control of Congress from the corporate interests and move all these things forward. Here in Colorado, you have the most remarkable amendment I have seen in decades on the ballot for you to vote into law. It's Amendment 53. And if some of you have not heard of it, I'm going to describe it in three short sentences. Amendment 53, if passed, would hold senior company officers criminally liable for corporate wrongdoings and permit the public to bring civil action lawsuits against company officers for criminal actions by their corporation. This, this initiative drive has been sponsored and organized by Protect Colorado's Future, a trade union-backed group. Go to the polls. It's winning in the polls now. Don't let the people of Colorado be propagandized by what's coming on these television ads. If you enact this initiative, it will give heart and life to initiatives all over the country, not only because it's long overdue, not only because the corporate crime wave is getting bigger and bigger and they're throwing it on your backs to bail them out, but it's because people in California and Wisconsin and Michigan and Massachusetts will say to themselves, for heaven's sake, if it can happen in Colorado, it can happen anywhere. All right, on the debates, you remember reading about the Lincoln-Douglas debates? They went on in farm fields for three, four, five hours. There is no moderator. They just went at it. And scribes would write down shorthand every word and print it in the daily newspapers, which people would gobble up for a penny a newspaper. Those were the days when you had real debates on real issues, with real, consistently repetitive exchanges so that the arguments can be winnowed out as thousands of people stood in the farm fields to listen to them. Now, those are the days when there was no TV, no radio, no internet, no telephone, no email. There's nothing like that. And we have all of that today.